Hi everyone, my name is Kingwa Kamenchu and I am with Black Star Media in partnership with Creative Garage for the Lock-In Festival. And this is the first in the series of Creatives in Adversity or Creativity in Adversity. And just looking at the state of creatives and, the, and uh, the creative economy and how we as creatives are doing at this time, um, a time of uncertainty and a time of a bit of confusion. So we're just touching base to begin with. And today, i um, very happy to be joined by the CEO of Kenya Film Commission, um, Mr. Tim Owase, who's been doing a lot of work in the sector and um, just been compiling a lot of information and really been in touch with a lot of creatives at this time. And I'm sure he has a lot of good um, information to share with us today. Today. My name is Timothy Owase, the CEO of Kenya Film Commission. I'm happy to be hosted by you. So maybe we could just jump in. And, um, and I think it was very good and timely that to have you as, like, in this initial discussion because I know KFC has been like uh, sort of like setting up initiatives, setting up inroads in different parts of the country, like mm -hmm. outside Nairobi. And also there was something, there was a directorate, uh, a directory that you were doing. So it would be interesting maybe to begin, mm -hmm. um, just you could tell us something about that. Thank you uh, for hosting me. First of all, I just want to say that uh, Kenya Film Commission, as a body corporate established by government, has a responsibility of uh, creating a competitive environment for the film industry in Kenya, and also promoting Kenya as a filming destination. Uh, thereby, we have a um, huge mandate to deliver to Kenyans. Mm. That is uh, growing capacity, uh, marketing Kenya, uh, being able to organize the industry through certification and accreditation, mm -hmm. and also uh, providing to the general public and government uh, information uh, that would be relevant to the film and the creative industry in general uh, for decision making. Thus, we do undertake a number of research so that we are able to provide that timely information. Okay. Also, we have a mandate to archive and uh, create a repository for the film industry in Kenya uh, so that we are able to give an opportunity to anyone who wish to access local content mm. um, at uh, one stop. That is by being able to collect, uh, provide a storage mechanism, and uh, opening it up for access by anyone. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is so good. Um, <coughs> and, and I know that also you also host, you also give opportunity to um, organizations, film associations like you, um, like I've, I've actually attended some of the events that you that the KFC has given space for. So creatives mm. are post Corona. If you're looking for a place to um, maybe hold an event, okay, not a humongous like mm -hmm. big stadium style <laughs> stadium size <laughs> event, but KFC mm. is very is very helpful and open towards that. Mm. So I'd be interested to hear more about the the directory that you had that KFC had been doing. How far is it on that, and what were some of the findings? Thank you. Um, as part of uh, reorganizing the film industry in Kenya, yeah. we made it deliberate. And uh, because it's part of our mandate to get an organized directory. Mm -hmm. You know, filmmakers are in business. Yeah. The writers, the directors, producers, actors. distributors, mm -hmm. actors, all of them are in business. And uh, for them to really uh, attain their their goals, uh, they have to belong. And for us as Kenya Film Commission, which is a government entity, it's in our interest and the interest of uh, government to have uh, a list or a directory of all the practitioners in the industry. Mm -hmm. And for that, it's important for us to have this particular database. Okay. So a few months ago, we made a choice to establish the database. Okay. And uh, the code to this database will open the whole world to our creatives. Mm -hmm. How will this happen? We, we are currently installing uh, a database infrastructure mm -hmm. that will enable, upon launch, uh, the world community. Anyone looking for an actress in Kenya, they will only require to click on our website go to the directory, click on, let's say, Papa Shirandla, 
And when you click on that, you should be able to find the profile of this actor, uh -huh. and you can be able to evaluate uh -huh. thousands of them, meaning this is an opportunity for us to market our practitioners to the world. I love that. If you are looking for a producer yeah. or a local service provider, you should be able to click and find mm -hmm. a local company mm -hmm. that is offering the kind of service you are looking for. Wow. If you want to access locations, and for example, you are looking for uh, what locations you can be able to apply to your production mm -hmm. in the northern, northern Kenya. Mm -hmm. At a click of a button, you should be able to zoom in and see what are we talking about. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about Northeastern or Nairobi, what's the population? All those demographics, mm -hmm. we want to bring them out mm -hmm. so that information is available yeah. for the industry practitioners. And how far is it so far? Did you finish? At the, is it online yet? Not yet online. Uh -huh. Currently, we, are, we have already sent out a call. Uh, we have received quite a number of um, uh, people registering. About, do you remember the number? It's a campaign that is still ongoing, okay. but we are currently at around 1,000. Okay. Uh, my target is that uh, I need to know, actually when I talk about Kenyan filmmakers, mm -hmm. how many are they yeah. and where are they? How many yeah. um, actors yeah. are found in Kitui, for example? How many producers wow. are in Garissa? Wow. So that when we are talking about the business of mm -hmm. filmmaking in the yeah. country, then we are creating a network of professionals yeah. who can be able to partner and produce film content mm -hmm. in the country. So um, in another two or three months, okay. we should have this completed. Right. So it's still a work in progress. So if people, if there's a scriptwriter, someone that wants to send in their details, how can they do that? Uh, so far, right now, you just need to go to our website. Okay. Uh, that is uh, kenyafilmcommission.com. Mm -hmm. You should be able to find the, the link okay. that you just fill in. It's an easy fill. Ah, nice. Then uh, you, give, you leave your details. Oh, that's good. Uh, at the end of all this, yeah. you will be available to anyone who is looking for you right. without having to really look for uh, any manual document. And out of this, we will have a physical booklet in form of film directory for Kenya that can be distributed oh, wow. to all foreign missions yeah. and Kenyan embassies across the world. When you are going to uh, a market, uh, let's say Cannes International, American Film Market, Discop, mm -hmm. Balinale, or any other festival, mm -hmm. you have a selling tool mm -hmm. that is able to show how many businesses yeah are there in Kenya that do the business of film. And you know, that is just one of the many uh, programs that the commission is undertaking. Yeah. And I think mm. one, one, one thing about film is that film sort of incorporates all the, uh, all the sectors of the arts, visual arts, because mm. like with the backgrounds, mm. um, writing, like you said, script writing, um, camera work, yes. Uh, yes. videography, mm. actors, producers, um, wardrobe, hair and beauty, makeup. Yes. Um, yeah. So it, it. So, which is why I think that it's uh, it's very in order, and I think an idea which whose time has come that it's actually KFC that is that is doing this, and and I like the idea that it's it's because it also centers the people in the in the sectors, mm. um, and in the which is important in the context of a sector which has been historically ignored, um, which has, in fact, even historically, one could even say sort of like been stamped down on um, and, and like really ignored and seen as a, as a so almost like a pesky nuisance. So I really, um, I, 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 uh, I salute you for what you're doing. So like we, when we were mm. saying earlier, and we mm. had like a whole discussion, <laughs> but that yeah, so corona situation is here, yes. but that doesn't mean that work does not, does not come to an end. I mean that um, everything has to come to a standstill. Mm. So mm. I'd be interested to, to find out, like, because I know you've been in touch with a lot of people in the sector. Mm -hmm. So what is the situation? Because this particular um, 
um, episode we're looking at just touching base and finding mm. out. So what, what have you been hearing from practitioners? I know they've been calling you a lot, um, especially about the uh, the money that was promised by the president, and we're gonna a lot, we'll talk about that. But mm. for now, what is the what is the situation in the sector? What are people saying? What is the how how is the corona situation affecting people? Thank you for that question. I think uh, first of all, let's appreciate that COVID nineteen is here. Yeah. It's a situation that we are already in. All other sectors are in this particular situation, and um, from where I sit, the filmmakers, just like any other practitioner in a different field, are equally affected. But um, I will also add that most projects within my sector yeah. have greatly been affected uh -huh. because they involve many people at any given time. Yeah. For any production to take place, you need X number of actors or actresses, you need uh, directors, uh, first DOP, DOP, you need a uh, producer, all those people. Catering, yes, wardrobe. transport, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm. So the situation is that um, by nature, we produce film products mm. through gatherings. And right now we are promoting a situation where we are saying that social distancing should be the norm. Mm. We need to maintain certain levels of uh, distance, hygiene, and so on. And uh, within the creative space, mm. uh, to some extent, that may not be feasible, which means uh, productions have been canceled or suspended. Yeah. That's loss of business. Yeah. That's loss of employment. Um, the commission has actually already undertaken a survey. Mm -hmm. And from that survey, we are talking of big figures, which I will not mention, mm -hmm. that most uh, local film businesses have already lost. Oh. And uh, it's within our interest that uh, we find a way on how to mitigate the practitioners in this particular field. Mm -hmm. We are also advising um, government on uh, how we can intervene to come up with specific and practical measures that can be able to mitigate the challenge of COVID-19. Yeah. Um, about our own programs, we've had to suspend virtually all our county engagements. We had started a residency program in Wasinigishu. We had to stop that. Capacity building workshop in Kakamega, not Kakamega, in Bungoma. Mm -hmm and uh, many more other programs, including uh, the Kalasha International Film and TV Market. Mm -hmm. We've had to suspend that, mm -hmm. but COVID-19 has again also brought us opportunities to think further. Yeah. During this period of uh, COVID-19, uh, businesses have to rethink. Remember, we are all asked to stay home, work from home, maintain social distancing, but business has to continue. Mm -hmm. So how do you ensure continuity? I will think in terms of my own organization. Yeah. Uh, the commission has had to, to let quite a number of staff to work from home. Okay. Um, on a typical day, we have like one or two or three people at the office. And that is to respond to key inquiries mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, we still maintain to host our management meetings uh, through technology. We are able to engage our staff from wherever they are. They are we are able to supervise them. They are able to give reports. And uh, all those programs that we suspended, mm -hmm. um, we have had to come up with uh, other ways of achieving them. Okay. For example, for the purpose of creating awareness within the space we are in, we normally have a program called My Kenya, My Story which is a mobile film competition that we normally run every year. And it is a competition that is meant to show young practitioners that you can still tell your story without having to utilize huge technologies. Wow. You can utilize a mobile phone, yeah. tell your story, edit, and have it complete for distribution. So uh, this time around, uh, I think by next week, we'll be rolling out a campaign asking Kenyans, parents, their children, and everybody else yeah. to just share with us oh. uh, in picture form yeah. uh, or through their mobile phone mm. 
uh, to capture a five minute production edited wow. about staying home wow. during this COVID-19 period. Mm -hmm. And I know there are many stories and we are targeting the entire country. Yeah. Um, the winner will have some good amount to win. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is a competition that everyone will be called upon to come out. Mm -hmm mothers, fathers, children, grandchildren, and everyone else okay. to participate in this. Yes. That is one way of uh, we are addressing the awareness component of COVID-19, but at the same time, encouraging the masses to utilize the available technology in telling stories okay. around us. Uh, Kalasha, international film and TV market. We've you're, had... you're using film to add value in this. Yes, in this exactly. Sorry, it's exactly. very important. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So for Kalasha market, we had it to suspend. Okay. And we are also now thinking of how do we host Kalasha this financial year, but through technology. Mm -hmm. Again, that is something we are grappling with. We are, we are trying to think ahead yeah. and see what's the future of conferencing. Yeah. What's the future of exhibition? How do we host Kalasha without necessarily having to have people physically come to Nairobi? Yeah. And, uh, from where I sit, it's a possibility. So we'll again be announcing some of the other measures that we'll be able to put forth. Right. Other than that, capacity building. We are talking about uh, master classes online. Um, we need to train people in photography and other areas. Mm -hmm. um, enhance skills, because as a practitioner, you've yeah. gone through school, yeah. you've, uh, you are a practicing, uh, let's say, photographer uh, or cinematographer. But for us, we are saying that in our field, technology evolves every day, and that's why we have to keep you updated with the latest trend mm -hmm. on how your field is operating. Yeah. So master classes are very critical. Yeah. We have partnered with the universities, like okay. um, USIU, um, uh, Deista University, yeah. and others. Okay. And the intention is that uh, we should be able to provide placement yeah. for these young people yeah when they come out so that you shouldn't be asking him w where he has gained experience when he's just come from school. So those placements are mm -hmm. very critical. Mm -hmm. So we are connecting with every aspect. Mm -hmm. Something else that is very important is film curriculum. Uh, for many years, uh, we've had complaints from the industry that you know, anytime we get students straight from school or university, we have to retrain them. But uh, for us at the commission, we had one answer. Why can't we have a uniform curriculum? Yeah. A curriculum that is based on the industry needs. So we worked with the SIDAC TVET, which is a government uh, agency under the Ministry of Education. Yeah. And um, the curriculum is now ready. Oh, nice. And all TVET uh, oriented institutions mm -hmm. that are accredited have this particular curriculum as a tool for training, which means anyone who is able to cover all those hours in specific areas, for example, scripting yeah. or uh, directing, editing, and so on, they should be able to come out as competent as possible. So, so our good. intention here is to build capacity in the country, okay. which is very critical. In, yeah. It's very, very important because, yeah, you're mm. right, like it has been a complaint, the, the mm. issue of quality. Mm. I, I, is any, because I've been seeing that KFC has been sharing a lot of, um, a lot of like local movies and a mm. lot of mm. initiatives happening right now. Um, in terms of the master classes, is mm -hmm. anything ongoing or is there any place that you could point someone who maybe right now in this time wants to use the, opportunity, the time to maybe learn something? Is there any place that you could point them to? Yes, I would like to call upon the viewers mm -hmm. to follow Kenya Film Commission uh, social media tools. Okay. Uh, there is uh, master classes uh -huh. that are currently being an, uh, undertaken by Multi-Choice Talent Factory oh, nice. and uh, Dolby. Uh -huh. And uh, them being our partners, yeah. we are encouraging Kenyans to really take up these opportunities yeah. and learn online. Okay. We are offering this for free. Yeah. I think... Uh, um, Knowledge is the only thing that you need to seek for every time you have an opportunity. And now that you are at home, please Learn take... Learn how to fish, don't yes, ask for fish. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's an opportunity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And also, uh, as we power the capacity or ignite creativity, 
uh, through capacity building. We're also saying that we not only want to give you an opportunity to learn how to, but we also want to now provide you an opportunity to be able to get uh, a backbone in terms of funding yeah. to produce your content. So for the first time, Kenya Film Commission is going to send out a call and we'll be doing this twice a year for people to apply oh, wow. so that they're able to, to, based on a criteria that has yeah. been set, yeah. to go through the motions yeah. and get funding for production. Wow. And I think uh, that's how we want to nurture our industry yeah. and also operate in a more organized way. Yeah. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because we've had situations where uh, you have a script and um, you don't do any paperwork in terms of the people who will participate on your production. Mm -hmm. There are no contracts. Mm -hmm. The IP is not well registered. Mm -hmm. And also paying your artists is not part of your plan, <laughs> but you are interested in yeah. producing complete content. Yeah. So all we are saying, when we start sending out a call for those who are applying for funding, yeah. all motions of production will have to satisfy the team that you are actually following each step. Mm -hmm. And that way, we'll be helping the industry to get professional. Absolutely. And when it gets professional, then you will have X as a writer, B as a distributor, people getting specialized in mm -hmm. their areas. Yeah. I would like to see intellectual property lawyers getting jobs within our sector. I would know, like to see yeah. uh, actors and actresses not being producers. Let them focus on what they do best. Remain in their lane. Yes, they <laughs> remain on their lane. Okay. But they can only remain on their lane mm -hmm. when we are giving them that opportunity. That's true. And we can only give them such an opportunity if they are being paid yeah. to their work. True. Something else, and this is now a challenge to the industry, mm -hmm. how we get organized. We should not let the government to organize you. We should get organized. For example, when you talk about Directors Guild, the Producers mm -hmm. Guild, mm -hmm. the Actors Guild, plus many more. Mm -hmm. These institutions need to be very professional yeah. so that as an, an artist or a practitioner in the industry, I feel that I want to belong. Yeah. And I can only feel that I want to belong if I'm gaining value from the association. Yeah, from being part but, of it. Yes, but if the association is not providing me value, why should I be? Yeah. For example, if you are a member of Actors Guild, and uh, the Actors Guild has got a proper um, call sheet in terms of, uh, or the, the red card on how you should be paid, and it dictates how your payment should be done, I believe there won't be any level of shortchanging each other. Mm -hmm. The pricing will ensure that you earn what you deserve. Mm -hmm. It will kill this element of you are willing to earn 2,000, he's willing to earn 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. And because he's not good, but he's good at the price, mm -hmm. he gets the job, but mm -hmm. he is not able to deliver the way you will have delivered. Quality. Yes. Yeah. So, so that, that vicious cycle. Exactly. So we, we have to come out of that. That is and so powerful how yes. you're going, mm -hmm. like, because you're literally going over and beyond your mandate. In time. I mean, you're mm -hmm. taking initiative, really, mm -hmm. because you've recognized that lack of money, lack of funding, is something mm -hmm. that artists have really been complaining about. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially right now, one, mm -hmm. one question people, a lot of people have been calling you and mm -hmm. asking about, and that we've been hearing about on social media, is mm -hmm. a question of um, what was announced by the president that artists are going to get 100 million shillings. Mm -hmm. so, um, so first of all, there's a bit of confusion. Is it 100 million? Is it 200 million? Then there's also a lot of other things being said that it's only for musicians and uh, from the peer, from the mm. from the organize from the uh, what do you call them the CMOs the CMOs yeah so so maybe you could give some clarity on that so when 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 the president announced that was it was that is that 100 million or 200 is it for all artists whether you're a visual <laughs> artist or to a singer to a mm. sculptor mm. or is it only for the musicians what was just maybe you could give some clarity you know um, thank you for that question. When the president made the announcement, um, he was very clear. He talked about the 100 million from the Arts Fund. He also spoke about the 200 million 
uh, towards CMOs, and that is based on the collection. Mm -hmm. That's purely royalties. Okay. And you know when you talk about the 200 million, yeah. which will translate to 2 billion a year, mm -hmm. uh, the president meant that as an artist, you'll be earning more because there will be more and transparent, accountable uh, systems of collecting royalties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means all those artists who are genuinely registered through the collect collecting management organizations, CMOs like yeah. PRISC, uh, CAMP, MCSK, yeah. and others, mm -hmm. will have an opportunity to gain from this. Yeah. For us in the film industry, it's only actors who are uh, connected to PRISC. Okay. So what are we doing so that we, we ensure that uh, the audiovisual uh, component is also part of the royalty collection? Mm -hmm. Uh, there are two companies that have already applied for a CMO license. Uh -huh. And remember, the license is, pro, is actually uh, issued by Kenya Corporate Board. But because we are an interested party as uh, the developer of the local film industry, we are working with the Kenya Corporate Board to see to it that uh, producers are able, producers for film, are able to also be part of a CMO where they can be able to gain uh, from the royalties that will be coming out of these particular outlets. But for now, uh, for those who are not affiliated to any CMO, yeah. I'm sorry to say that uh, they cannot count themselves okay. as part of the royalty system that will emanate yeah. from the 200 yeah. million. Because yes. the royalty means that it come, it's coming from a work of art, something that they've produced. So what about mm -hmm. the, the, from the art fund, the 100 million? So what, the, how is that being disbursed and who is it for? Okay, for the 100 million, again, the president was very clear. He gave a directive to the Ministry of Arts and Heritage mm -hmm. to consider the 100 million shillings uh, in support of the art sector. Okay. And you know when you talk about arts, it's very broad. Okay. I've heard you mention music, musicians, mm -hmm. but the president was very clear mm -hmm. and there is uh, that gazette notice mm -hmm. that talked about that. So as an answer to your question, the ministry is currently working on modalities on how mm -hmm. the 100 million shillings will be utilized. Mm -hmm. I do not want to give yeah. um, a blanket answer that this money will be availed <laughs> in a box for people to share. I don't think that's how government right. works. No. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for that clarity. Mm -hmm. And so maybe just as we round up, mm -hmm. what, 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 what are you looking for in terms of moving forward? So two things. So what is KC, what is KFC looking at moving forward? I know you've talked about no. uh, going online possibly um, with the festivals and um, the competition. Mm -hmm. um, so is there anything more on that? And also, and then lastly would be what, 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 what would be the takeaway? What, what is, what, is there anything you'd like to tell the yes. artists, creatives at this time? Yeah, there is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I just want to encourage the artists mm -hmm. and more so filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you are encouraging, tell me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I wish to take this opportunity to encourage filmmakers to take advantage of the current situation to seize the positive opportunities they can be able to utilize. For example, everyone is at home. Everyone is looking for good content. You have an array of opportunity in terms of distribution you can be able to distribute your content through the digital platforms that are available and still uh, gain revenue. Establish more revenue streams. Be creative on how you produce content. And from where we sit, we are also creating an avenue to see how we can be able to partner with the national broadcaster so that the content that is out there is actually bought by the national broadcaster so that the money to the pockets of artists is felt, and at the same time, content that you have produced and kept for long is available, available for everyone to see. That is something that we are currently doing. So we are looking at available partnerships to grow the business of film through, uh, for example, I mentioned companies like MultiChoice. Mm -hmm. um, 
Remember, we are working with the Canon on capacity building. We are working with the universities also for industry placement. Yeah. We are working with other government agencies like SIDAC on curriculum development, plus many more. Yeah. So the challenge, which again I call yeah. upon the filmmakers, is that please don't cry foul. COVID is a situation that we are all faced with. Let's see how we social distance while at the same time create content that will give us income. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you so much, team. Thank you for your time and you. Uh, sharing your thoughts with us. And, and also for all the work that you're doing. Uh, I think you work overtime. I suspect that you do because just, uh, I mean, having been in the scene and having mm -hmm. seen what you've been able to do in such mm -hmm. a short time with such few resources, like I, um, yeah, I just have a lot of respect for what you're doing. So well done and keep on doing it. There is only one mantra. <laughs> what is that? If you work for a public entity, uh -huh. It's all about public service. Okay. Well, service delivery. All right. Uh, you need to give service yeah. to the public without any reservation. Yeah. And uh, anything that is within your power as an individual, yeah. I think uh, not only in government, yeah. but from whichever space you are, yeah. you just have to do your best. So I keep doing my best. All right. Yes. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in and being with us. Um, so there's four takeaways that I'm sure you've noticed. So the first thing that you need to do is to um, keep in mind that there's a competition uh, for making a short film at home. You could do it on your mobile phone and you could just edit it. Um, and there's actually going to be a cash prize, so you need to just keep, out, keep a watch for it. Um, and you need to go to the Kenya Film Commission social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, and the website, and you're going to find more information about that. The second thing is that... Uh, there is funding for a movie production, like a proper uh, movie production, and this is now for actual professional filmmakers. This is something that's going to be inter of interest to you. Um, I think the space for, is it two productions? We might go to up to five. Okay, so, so just keep that in mind and um, so that you can start sending in your application for that. The third thing that would be of benefit that might help at this time is that there's master classes that KFC is holding in partnership with uh, MultiChoice and Dolby. So you can check out their website again for that, for more information. And then lastly, and this is very important, I want you to go to the KFC website and make sure that you put in your details, you register. Um, for the directory, because much as we've been talking about the, the money that, has, that was announced, we need to keep in mind that there has to be a way in which um, you can be reached as an artist, as a filmmaker, as a, as a writer, as a videographer. So this is very important. Um, make sure you do it. I know creatives, we are lazy sometimes, or a lot of times, but please do and make sure that, I mean, like me personally, I haven't yet registered on, mm -hmm. on so I need to. Um, and then make sure that you tell, spread the 